Wow. This is the reason why I and my 20 colleagues in Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Holland and Uganda go to work every morning. We want to try to do everything we can so people won't feel tolerated, won't feel accepted or permitted, but welcomed, wished for, expected. And that is what I'm going to use my eight minutes to talk about. A while ago, a hospital in Scandinavia called us and uh, they explained they were heading into competitive waters and they needed to refine their service uh, to attract patients, to attract talent. And they wondered, what do the masters in all kinds of sectors do in order to really create an attractive environment that will attract patients and talent? What are the 4.5s doing in any kind of business? So I told them first, they think not so much on giving people service, but in welcoming people, welcoming, making people feel included, involved, seen, making them feel as human beings. So I asked them, what would it mean if people coming to your hospitals was not only seen as patients or a problem they were carrying for the reason why they came, but also as guests coming there? What would that mean? And they said, we can't call them guests. No, you don't need to call them guests. It's more like a mindset, a welcoming mindset that could comprise of things like this. When we meet somebody as a guest, you know, the fine thing about seeing somebody as a guest, it turns you automatically into a host. If there is a guest, there is a host. And maybe this is what a welcoming mindset would look like. Openness, curiosity, to truly respect somebody, to respect is to see somebody as they are and their situation as it is. A welcoming mindset would take that you would be very present when meeting another person and not, you know, involved in too many thoughts on other stuff. A welcoming mindset would be understanding the meaning of the word dialogue. It means to stand without opinion. Dia through, like diagnosis, through knowledge. Dialogos means through meaning. Dialogue means to understand the other person and the situation. Maybe this is a welcoming mindset, I told them. So then I continued and said, maybe if you really want to create an evolving, including external side of your hospital, maybe that is totally impossible if it isn't mirrored internally. How can you ever expect somebody to feel welcome to you if not the talent working for you feel wished for, welcome, expected, feel as colleagues. And everything starts with understanding that we as colleagues are part of the same orchestra. We might be in different departments, but we're playing the same kind of music. And it really matters what we do or do, do not do, say or do not say. And then finally I told them, maybe everything starts here. Maybe everything starts by being authentic as an individual, by sitting on the right bus to work in the morning, by being in harmony, by being the true you, so to speak, to welcome oneself. And I think after reading some 600 books on personal development and personal leadership, and I've been to like 150 seminars and retreats because I'm very curious about being a human being. I think that is the first responsibility we have and maybe the hardest one too is to welcome ourselves, because we do that, everything will turn out more in harmony when we get to work and so forth. Now one guy that I write about and talk about is this guy. I met him in, in a city in the north of Sweden. I, I studied him. He was driving the airport bus 
And he was helping everybody. He was greeting everybody. He had flowers up front. He had some Persian music. And he makes jokes on, on, on the way into the city. Ladies and gentlemen, nowadays you need to have safety belts on the bus. In, in Sweden, everybody goes like this. Uh -huh. And then he said, well, this is the captain again. I got my driving license yesterday. And everybody goes, zoom, zoom, zoom. So he's kind of, was very much into it. And I got to know this guy, and I asked him a question after a couple of years. Why are you like this? You know, four times every year people call the airport in that little town to ask when his trips are so they can take a flight that connects to his bus. <laughs> and this is his answer. It's a choice. It's a choice I make every morning. It's a choice I make every day I go to work. Nobody can spoil my day without my permission. The way I think, the way my day turns out, if I expect to meet a bunch of idiots, they will be standing in line and waiting for me. It depends on how you see things. It's a choice, and we make different choices. You know, actually, he said, there are some people, they wake up and they go to work, and they don't even make a choice, they just go to work. Is that true, I said, is it possible? <clears throat> yeah. And you know what, you never know if this is the last day ever you go to work. So why not make it a good day? Some make other choices. Some of my co colleagues, they drive tin cans. I don't drive a tin can. I make a difference for people. And, and, and some, some of my colleagues drive passengers. I don't have passengers. I have human beings, just like me. Maybe not on the outside, luckily enough for them, he said, but on the inside. And I have a lot of regulars, you know. That's great. I was sitting on the bus some time ago, and this guy comes on board, and he says, Hi, Mr. Payman. You know, they know the driver. How, he said, hi, how is, your, how is your knee nowadays? Well, I still have a problem with my left knee, he said. Well, I think about the right knee, how is that? The right knee, there's no problem with the right knee. You see, that's great. Why, why don't everybody think about the left knee? You know, he's really fantastic. It's a choice. It's my choice. Hostmanship is a choice starting how you welcome yourself. How you greet yourself in the morning in the bathroom mirror. Morning, handsome. Is that what you do? <laughs> you have to fool yourself sometimes, you know. <laughs> I have this big mirror too. You know. <laughs> what he is doing is not... I mean, what he is doing, he's mastering the art of hostmanship. He sees everybody as a guest. He's been doing this for 25 years, looking from the outside like a tin can, but not with his eyes. He, he, he masters the art of making people feel welcome. And I think, honestly, if he can make a difference for people, every trip he takes for so many years, what can't we do then? Thank you for listening. <laughs>